Well, a good day to y'all, folks. I want to show you what is going on. I got lucky on this machine after all, you know. I got this machine uh, very inexpensively. I just traded some stuff for it. I want to show you something here. I got it. These machines are quite sought after up here for some reason. They are a long track, single cylinder. They're very good on fuel, very dependable. And uh, anyways, they thought the body was rotted out, as did I. They thought there was something wrong with the steering on it. But I'm going to show you exactly what happened to it, which is pretty nice to know. These blocks, they go around here like this. That block goes in here like this. This block goes in here like this. And then this little guy here, which is bent, it goes through here to hold this to the body. But you see that hole there where it's ripped out a little bit? Can you see that? That. It's just going to require a washer in the back for now. Right there, I think you can see that. There's a hole on this side, right here. And there's a ripped out spot over here. So I think straighten this U-bolt out, put a washer in the back because it had a tin plate here, I think that kept that from threading off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these in, I'm gonna clean those up, put some grease on them, Straighten this back up get some washers and rebolt that steering and maybe put the engine in if I have a chance today Now I ended up getting these cleaned up with some uh, Put some good grease in there and a little bit of olive oil So they go around just like this Now I did try to straighten this out the best I can So I'm hoping that fits on. Oh, yeah, look at that That'll fit Perhaps nicely, I think. I need my hammer. Can you grab my hammer over there, please, babe? Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. What I want to do is get this. Maybe, you know what, just prying her like that'll push it in there. And it has. It has, it has. Turn this in here like this. I'm hoping. Yeah, you see, it's not. Uh... Did it go in there? It did. Oh, did this side pop out though? I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get one nut and washer on there right away underneath. That is bloody cold out. I thought I was gonna have to weld that body up, but looks like I'm not gonna have to now. Now I have this large washer. 
and this nut I just lost. So this large washer should keep it from falling through again. Let's see if I can get that put on there. We did. I did, I did. Okay, so I'm gonna get some tools and I'll be right out tighten that up, folks. Well, I'm gonna warm my hands first though. So that should be that fixed, see there? Now I will reinforce that body this summer. <clears throat> I think that'll be good though for this year. Once that's bolted down tight, that'll really make it stiffer. More stiff, stiffer, whatevs. Okay, we'll be back. I'm gonna try to lean this on its side a bit maybe and get a block of wood under there so I can work on it easier without having to reach my hand under there so far. Guessing that worked out quite nicely. Under here, the camera, I'll show you what's going on. This one's gonna have to be fixed in the spring. Because, oh, sorry, I just zoomed the way in. So that has to be fixed there, just a little plate. Just has to be welded back in there, which is no big deal. Track and sprockets look good under here. I'm gonna bolt this up, I'll hand this back to Heather. You gonna what? Hand it back to you and I'm gonna bolt this up right here. How does that sound? Sounds good. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be, Heather. No, that's good then. I thought it was gonna be some big welding job this winter before we could use that. Turns out it won't be. And this large one, see all I'd have to do is make a plate on the inside and the outside and sandwich it together when I bolt it. But I'm just gonna weld that piece in because I see how easy it is to get to this. I should really be replacing these uh, nuts with what they call stover nuts or a nylon lock nut. But I didn't. That's why that's how this is gonna come right out here, okay? That spring that's gonna have to be re riveted back in there. It's not really a big deal. Now, I'm not sure how much you tighten these up. I don't want to over tighten it in case it don't steer. That's the other fun thing. Now, one of these skis I think were broken. Well, it's ripped a little bit. That's not bad. The one on my machine was worse than that. That is quite fixable. That. These machines are so light, it's, un it's unreal. That turns easy. Flexes a little bit, but I think they did when they were new anyways. They flexed a little bit, so that's good. Now, you know what we're going to do? What? We're going to set the engine right back in there and bolt her up. Heavy one. So now we want to take these two bolts out of the front. They are the two front motor mounts. These are the back ones. This is the back one. There's only one back one. Now, if I'm correct, I want to hook up the line to the fuel pump. I'm gonna get in here a little closer. I'm gonna fold this up out of the way. This should go in on the outside. Like thread. It goes like this. A bit more. It goes in like this here. See that? 
this one. This one will go right down into here. This has to go a little lower. Carburetor here is causing me a problem right now. There we go. That's serving me nicely. That's going in. Let's get this one in place. That front one's in. Go up the back one here. Um, I'm not sure. I think the bolt went from this side through. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that. Okay. I'm trying here. I gotta get up here. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So, little machine was given up for dead because of that motor mount. There's still lots of life in it. Now this here has to get pushed right up into here. There should be a spring. I may have taken it in the house. Super burr. Hmm? Wanna put your hands in my gloves? They won't fit. They wouldn't even come close <laughs> Probably. Carburetor in there. Line up the tab. There we go. That's lined up. It's in there. It's got to straighten that up like that. Tighten that down. Hook up the fuel pump line. Fuel pump line's always easier to do when the engine's out. But we're just gonna push that on there anyways right now. Get on there. Fuel line's on. I just gotta do up the do up the clamp in a minute here. Everything's still all good on there. Does this work here? Let me see this. Maybe out of fuel. Oh, that line broke off. So we definitely need a little, a little uh, primer line for that because it's cooked. <clears throat> oh, you know what? This here right now can get hooked up to there right away. I'm not 100% sure. Just like this, like this. I'm not sure. Does this go underneath it? I don't remember now.
You know what? I may go on the top. Let me see here. No, it goes underneath. If it went on the top, I would just end up uh, just end up getting wrecked, I think. So it's gonna go right here. So this comes ahead here like this. It gets set on my head. I get started now like that. I think it goes under there. I'm not sure. It's not gonna hurt if it don't. It's not gonna hurt nothing. Now these get plugged into here. These are the ignition wires. There's the coil wire, which I'm gonna have to tape. I'm gonna have to put a tie strap around them because they will vibrate loose. I'll do up this one here as well. This is the other CDI box wires. The capacitating discharge ignition. This here, <coughs> that wire is good. Yeah, that ground's good, okay. This here gets just plugged right onto here. You line them up, push them in together. There we go, that's the key switch wire hooked up. This gets over to here. <clears throat> the recoil that's put on here. How is that? Man, I'm gonna oil that, I think, and I'm gonna give it another wrap. To tighten these up. You just give that, if I can get that up through there, up through that notch, because, is that gonna go back in? No, that don't seem bad, that's good like that. Dude, that's good. So my pliers, my big pliers, and what else? A Phillips screwdriver, pliers, it's all working. Oh yeah, look at that. It has seen better days, but it'll work. 10 mil, I'm not sure what that is. I think that's the one I put on the stove. I'll be right back. See that? That's why it was heavy coming out, you see that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Listen. Had it on the stove because I forgot it out here and I was letting it warm up. 11 sixteens. And it even rolls over now. When I got it, it wouldn't roll over. I could use a ratchet and socket to tighten this up quicker, but that's okay. I'll be honest with you, I don't even know if it'll run. <clears throat> From what I understand though, they just parked it because the steering went on it and the steering's good now. I mean, it's a little loose, but, but it's loose down here in the tie rod ends now. Does, does it need gas in it or is it okay? I haven't checked it, Heather. Oh. Never even looked yet. Oh, okay. But I'm going to put the recoil on, mm -hmm. put the little plastic cover on so it protects our little, uh, our little fan here that cools it, driven by that belt off the crank pulley. Once we get it all bolted in, maybe we'll try to fire up tonight. What do you think? Okay. If it's not too late. Yeah. You know what I want to do? I want to take that axe out of there. It's my luck. I'll close it and break that hood. <laughs> yeah, that's probably wise. Now, I should have all the bolts to put this back together right in my pocket. I took it apart that day. I put them all in my pocket. Remember the other orange one we had was exactly like this? Yeah, I remember. It wasn't bad, I mean. It was tippy, but. Yeah. That's why they call them tumblers. They're actually a tundra, but everybody nicknamed them tumblers because they were so tippy. <laughs> yeah. But once you got used to them riding them, they weren't bad, though. Yeah. They're the equivalent, I mean, they were supposed to be Ski Doo's equivalent to yours. Okay. I don't know if they're ever any, any, I don't know if they're any better than yours. Yours is better on fuel than these guys. Yeah. Yours seems better in snow than this one. It's not going in, I think it is, eh? Yeah, okay. I find mine less tippy than the tundra we had. Yeah. Yeah, yours is wider. Yeah. But yours is harder to get around the trees, though, because you can't it lean on it as much. Yeah, that is true. These ones, you can lean on them, and they'll turn. <laughs> I got the, give me 40 acres, and I'll turn on this snowmobile around. That's the way they are, too. Yeah. yeah. See this one, the plate? It has a plate there for electric start. I didn't know these 
that these tundras never came with electric start. They, this hole down here with the two, see the large hole and the little holes, that's to bolt a starter in. Oh. But then you'd have to get the ring gear with the, uh, you'd have to get the clutch in the back part with the ring gear on it because, oh no, you can bolt it right on there. There's, there's, uh, there's, uh, provisions in the back of that clutch to, uh, to bolt her, a ring gear on there. So that's good. So now this just goes in here and then I gotta get the spring and then there's a spring that runs from here up to there to hold that on. Now I have to tighten this bolt up here. Okay, that's cooled down enough I can grab that. <clears throat> Unfortunately, this is gonna be a wrench all the way. I could get with it with us. I could get to it with a socket and ratchet, I'm sure, but they're all up at the old house, I think, to fit this. I'm gonna thread that on a fair wage with my fingers first, though. Yeah, now the whole thing's turning. So, I'll, I'll go see what I can find for a ratchet and socket. Okay, I have the ratchet. I mean, I have the socket. I'm hoping I left the ratchet over here, did I? Well, I'm going to tighten this up first anyways before I forget. Yes, the ratchet's right over uh, there on the generator behind you. Let's turn right away. Yes, it is. There go. That. I think it'll be level by the time the machine sets down off the blocks. Can you pass me the ratchet on that gen from that generator, please, babe? Things are sticking to that too. Do, are your gloves out here? Yeah, they're right there, but I can't work with them on. Oh. Do you want those little ones you have? No. Those thin nice. things? No. Wow. This seems pretty useless. Now look, now we got her scared, and the ratchet falls off. This is a hard mount to get to. The rest of them are, the rest of them are pretty easy. Only three bolts that hold this engine in there. The rear mount and the two front ones. It's tight. We traded an old snow blower for this. One I got on a deal when he did some work on a fella's truck. And we never used the snow blower, it was no good to us at all. And there are so many of those walk behind snow blowers around this country, it's unbelievable. But the snowmobile, I guess they figured was garbage because you look at it, you can see there's a few pieces broke off on it that's gotta be welded with a MIG, but that's no big deal. I have a MIG welder, so I'm not concerned about it. There, that was tight, Heather. Okay, so now, that in there. You know what? I can put the belt on now. <clears throat> now that'll be cold on the fingers. Yeah, they're tight. They should go on. There we go. This opens up. Okay. What's underneath there? Maybe there's too much snow for it to fit. 
good. Ooh, that belt's wore out. We'll get one another time. Warm my fingers up here. Burr. This comes off. You see that this year, the locking mechanism? It's just a little clip. <clears throat> this is the brace. That's froze right in there. And I just had it out the other day. There we go. It's not frozen anymore. It's just a little pin. It gets pushed through here. And that just keeps the uh, keeps the secondary clutch from going ahead too far. It's just a stabilizer. Now this little clip here. You're probably not gonna be able to see this too easy, but it just goes right here and it gets pushed in the hole. As soon as I find the hole there. Now that clip won't pop out. So we got the belt on. We got that on. Um, now we get these bolts. This here. These are what holds the recoil on. That's been in my pocket for a while. <laughs> Before I bolt that recoil on. Okay, well I just hooked up the fuel. I just slid the clamp down on the fuel line. So that's a done deal there. Now this is going to get put up here. I think I can just shorten this. I can cut it short and put it back on there, I think. That is the primer line, by the way. What I meant. Now you gotta pull his head and let it back so the dogs aren't stuck out. I think right about about there, I think. Hmm. Should it be here maybe? Yeah, I think right there is the better spot for it. Yeah. Yeah. I think. This recoil has seen better days, man. I will be replacing it. I think I have more of them. You know me, I don't throw too much of this stuff away. No, you don't. Like ever. No, that is true. Like ever. <laughs> oh, gee. Why do you want to bite me like that? Unclip like this, and it just lifts right out. Then I should be able to get to this bolt here. I'm hoping. Anyways, is there a hole there? Huh. Broken off bolt in it. That's why it's not happening. One will go on down here. So, it'll take a little work this summer to fix this. The recoil bolt is broken. If you're trying to do this though, take that muffler off. You will not like trying to bolt that on with a muffler in the way. So, I'll tighten up a little more here. I'll tighten this one up. Now line that up.
So I ended up getting the recoil bolted on, the three bolts. There's supposed to be another one down there, but it's broken off inside. So I will get at that in the spring perhaps, or the summer, or next year, or maybe never, I don't know. That's tightened up now. So the hood's not gonna fly open. So we got the carburetor tightened up. Oh, hey, look at this. This don't look good, does it?